children and praise the Lord. This is another beautiful Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We all will rejoice and be glad in it. We are also glad we are in a new month. I believe you are well and you have had a great week. I am teacher Penina. I am teacher Esther. And I am teacher David. And we are coming to you from PCA Nairobi West Sunday School. And we are going to begin our today's lesson with a word of encouragement and our prayer from our pastor, Reverend Festus Kitonga. Welcome, Reverend. Good morning, children. We thank God that we are able to communicate to you this Sunday, reminding you of the goodness of the Lord, who is gracious to us. Let me, before we pray, let me read you a verse. In John 10, verses 27, Jesus said, My sheep, Listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. This time, being the sheep of the Lord, the Lord being your shepherd, he knows you, you will follow him, and at a time like this one, the Lord loves you and protects you from all dangers, and that is our prayer. You will be taught good things today by your teachers. And let us first pray, and then they continue to teach you how the Lord is saying to us. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, our hope is in you. And Lord God, we thank you for these dear children you have given us. We parents and grandparents are happy because of them. You want us to teach them your word. They are your sheep. And Lord God, they will grow to be mighty in the land because you will protect them and guide them and provide for them. At a time like this one, when there are challenges, you will hide them where no hippo can touch them. They are protected by you, dear Lord. And so we present them to you as your sheep. You will protect them. You will guide them. And Lord, as they follow you, they will enjoy the blessings, the green patches that you have promised, and they will be blessed of you. Dear Lord, help the parents at this hour of need to bring them to your sheephold, that they may learn from you as we teach them the things you did in the past and the things you continue to do even today that you will do mighty things to them and for them. God will bless them. We pray that schools will be opened soon and they will go back to school and learn. We pray that to their friends, wherever they are, are safe, just as these ones are a safe way here we at home. We pray that you will protect each and every one of them. And when we will come back to church, Father, help us to thank you and praise you with joy because you have done good things all the months you have remained at home. Give them food. And if there is anyone suffering or sick, Lord, heal them, because you have called us to pray for our safety and our healing. We pray that they be healed in your name. We pray that, Lord, you provide food that those who may be lacking. And help us, Lord, to hear and follow you. So I bless them in your name and release them to you and bless the parents, and even the teachers who are going to teach through, through this media system, bless them, O oh Lord. I release them to you. Children, you are blessed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he sustain you by his grace, now and always. Amen. God bless you, children. Follow the teaching of your teachers. 
This is your pastor, Festus Getonga, praying and blessing you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Gitonga, for the prayer. And all children, we are going to sing a song together. Wherever you are, stand up and let us sing. One, two, sing. Children of God, will you sing hallelujah? Yes. Children of God, will you sing hallelujah? Yes. Sing hallelujah to the Lord three times. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Children of God, will you sing hallelujah? Yes. Children of God, will you sing hallelujah? Yes. Sing hallelujah to the Lord two times. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Children of God, will you sing hallelujah? Yes. Children of God, will you sing hallelujah? Yes. Sing hallelujah to the Lord one time. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, children. That is a beautiful song, and I hope you'll enjoy even to practice it many, many times. Amen. <laughs> Hello children, hope you are doing well and have been keeping safe. As we have always been reminding you, we need to take good care of ourselves and we need to observe the golden rules. And in order to keep safe, rule number one is that you are supposed to wash your hands regularly with soap and water. Remember, it should be running water and soap. If you do not have soap, you can use a hand sanitizer. Rule number two, remember, you are not supposed to touch your eyes, your nose, or your mouth. And rule number three, you are supposed to cough into your elbow. You are not supposed to cough into the air. Or if possible, you can use a tissue paper and dispose into the dustbin. Rule number four, you are supposed to maintain what they are calling the social distance. You are supposed to sit at least one meter away from your friends. And rule number five, you are supposed to always wear a face mask. Also remind your parents if they are stepping out of the house to always put on their face mask. Even you, if you are to step outside of the house, unless which is it's very necessary, you are supposed to have on your face mask. Rule number six, and the most critical, stay in the house. Do not move outside. Do not go outside to play. Do everything in the house. And always remember to take good care of yourself while staying in the house. God bless you. Children, I hope you enjoyed our Bible lesson and our songs last Sunday. And also our memory verse, which came from the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And the Bible says, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Our today's story is about Noah and the ark. Noah was a very good person. He did what was right. He was the only man in the whole world who loved and obeyed God. And all the other people were doing bad things. They never listened to God. There was much fighting, stealing, killing, and God was very sad. It made God very sad. And when they continued to do those bad things, God became very angry. And God said that he's going to flood the whole world with water and destroy everything in the world. And God decided to save Noah and his whole family. He told Noah to build a ark. A ark is a big boat. You remember last time we built, uh, we, we built a, a boat? That was a fishing boat. Now the boat that Noah built was so big like a, hub, a big house. And he made it big enough for his family and many animals. And God showed him how he should make the boat. And people laughed at Noah as he explained to them why he was building the boat. And he kept on telling them about God, but nobody listened. And when the ark was ready, God told Noah, and his family to enter in the ark. And God told Noah to correct all types of animals, two of each kind, 
a male and a female. And the animals entered in the ark, two by two, big and small, two elephants, two giraffes, even the small ones, two spiders, two snails, two mosquitoes, and so on. And when Noah and his family and all the animals entered in the ark, God closed the door of the ark and nobody could enter or go out of the ark. And after seven days, it started to rain. It rained more and more without stopping for 40 days and 40 nights. And the water flooded all over the world. It was like a big lake or an ocean. All the towns and villages, even the highest mountain on earth was covered with water. And the ark where Noah and, the anim and his family and all the animals were floated safely on the surface of the water. And Noah and his family and all the animals in the ark did not get wet. And after 40 days, God remembered Noah and it stopped to rain. And God made the wind to blow across the earth and the floods started to go away. Slowly, the ark came to rest on the mountain. And, some and for some time, uh, Noah opened the window of the ark and he sent two birds, a raven and a dove, to check whether the ground has dried. And the dove returned to Noah in the ark because he did not find a dry place to rest. A week later, Noah tried again, and this time the dove came back with a leaf on its beak. And he waited again, and he sent the dove, but it never returned back. And he knew that it was safe for him and his family and all the animals to leave the ark. And then God told Noah it was time to leave the ark. And Noah, his whole family, and all the animals in the ark, they walked out. And what, when they walked out, all the animals and all the people in the world were no longer there. They had died in the water. It was just Noah, his family, and all the animals that were in the ark. And Noah was very happy. He thanked God for saving him and his whole family. And God was pleased with Noah. And he made a rainbow to appear in the sky as a sign of a promise that he will never again destroy the earth with water. Children, every time you see the rainbow in the sky, remember it is a sign of a promise that God would never again destroy the earth with water. Children, the story of Noah is teaching us about obedience. Noah loved God. He obeyed God. And what he was told to do by God, he did it very well. Children, God has commanded us to love one another, to be kind, not to steal, kill, or even lie. And whenever we obey God, that's the only way we can be happy in God. And our memory verse today, it talks about obedience. It comes from the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. And the Bible says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. We can say it together, John chapter 14, verse 15. And the Bible says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Children, when you love God, you will obey what he tells you to do. And that's come to the end of our story. May God bless you. Thank you, Teacher Esther, for that beautiful story about Noah, the ark, the animals, and the rainbow. And now children, we are going to sing a song about that. So wherever you are, stand up and kindly join us. One, two, sing. Mr. Noah built a knack, and people thought it was a joke. The animals went in two by two, sheep and goats and kangaroos. And when you see the rainbow, rainbow, when you see the rainbow, rainbow, when you see the rainbow,
Children, now it's time for the Bible craft. Remember, last time we made a fishing boat and I saw what many of you made. They looked beautiful. And I'm happy that you have been enjoying our Bible craft. In fact, last Sunday's boats, many of you made better boats than I had made. And in fact, you outdid me. Today, teacher Esther has told us a very beautiful story about the Noah and the ark. And she has told us that God showed Noah a sign of the rainbow and today we are going to make the rainbow because I wonder what kind and how the rainbow looked at that time so it is time for us to prepare the rainbow that God showed to Noah what do we need in order to make the rainbow we are going to require a piece of paper and also we are going to require a seven colors you can use colored pencils or crayons Children, do you know why we need the seven colors? It is because the rainbow has seven beautiful colors. And which are these colors? We have color red, color orange, color yellow, color green, color blue, color indigo, and color violet. Those are the seven colors of the beautiful rainbow. Let us start. So children, we are going to need a pencil. You take your pencil and you know what shape the color of the rainbow is? The rainbow is, has a semicircular shape or what looks like a curve. So we are going to do the spaces whereby we are going to put all those colors. So I'm going to draw the semicircle. That is the first, first one because we need to have seven. So we have already we have the first space for the first color, then we draw space for the second color, that is color two, then we have space for color three, then we draw space for color four, then space for color five, space for color six, and finally space for color number seven. So how many spaces do we have? Let us count together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For the seven colors of the rainbow. Who can tell me the first color of the rainbow? The first color of the rainbow is color red. So the outer part of the rainbow, we are going to color it color red. So you take your color pencil or your crayon and color the outer part of the rainbow color red. Show you color nicely. I'm done coloring my first color. And now, what is color number two? Color number two is color orange. You take your orange color or crayon or pencil, color pencil, then you color the orange space. And you sure you color it nicely. Then color number three of the rainbow is color yellow. You take your yellow crayon or color pencil, you do the same. Then you go to color number four. Color number four is color green. You take your crayon or color pencil, color green. This is my favorite color, very beautiful. You color around. Then you take color number five, which is blue, sorry and you color it nicely. You remember color blue is the color of the sky? Yes. So color it nicely, color blue. Once you're done coloring color blue, 
you go to color indigo, which is color number six. And if you do not have a color indigo, you can take a dark purple. A dark purple is very close to color indigo. You color your rainbow nicely. And finally, you take color violet. If you do not have a violet crayon or, uh, or cray a pencil, you can take a dark pink. Then you color around in the innermost space with the violet or the dark pink crayon. And here we have our beautiful rainbow. Take your pen and write on top there, you write the rainbow. And you underline. Once you are done coloring and everything else, you are going to have our very beautiful rainbow. Wow! Now I see how the rainbow looks like. It's very beautiful. Once you're done, please give it to your parents so that they can mark for you. And also, it looks like beautiful art. You can stick it on the wall in your room. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? I hope you enjoyed our Bible craft today. Till next time, bye. Children, I hope you answered the questions for last Sunday. Remove your paper and mark uh, the questions correctly. And these are the answers. did you get? I hope you got everything correct. Today uh, you're going to answer the question about Noah and the ark and you're going to read from the book of Genesis chapter 6 to chapter 9 because it's a very wide story and you answer the following questions. children we have come to the end of our lesson for today and I hope that you have enjoyed everything that we have done and we are going to end together with a word of prayer so we pray together what do we do children we put our hands together we bow our heads and we close our eyes and let us pray our father and our God we want to thank you so much thank you for being together with us today Thank you for all the things you have taught us today about Noah and obeying you, O oh God. We pray that you may take care of us even as you continue to wait upon you. We ask for your blessings not only for us, but for the other children and also for our parents, O King of Glory. We pray all these things, believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Amen. And now, with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you children. Have a very great week. And remember, stay home, stay safe. Bye-bye.